The way you receive that forgiveness from God is you must repent. But repentance requires humility. And folks, if there's anything that is an earmark of humanity, human beings are proud and self-righteous by nature. And it is so, so very hard for them to humble themselves and bend the knee to the Lord God that they know exists. But it's the only way, folks. You see, the Bible says very, very clearly that God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. We've heard yesterday it was kicking off Pride Week, and yet God hates pride. Isn't that ironic? God hates pride. He hates self-righteousness. Because He's good, sir, and you're not. Pardon me? I'm sorry? Well, I can ask you a few questions. See if you are good. Is that right? Okay, how many lies have you told in your life? Okay, what do you call someone who tells lies? Okay, thank you. So what are you? Okay. So if you tell lies, folks, he doesn't want to say it, and I understand why, because he doesn't want to admit he's a liar, but that's what it makes him, right? Right. Sinner is a lawbreaker. You've broken God's law. The ninth commandment says you shall not lie. It's written on your heart, you know it, and you still did it. Why is that? It's, why is that, sir? Why did you do that? Well, you know it's wrong. Yeah, you do know. Oh, sure you do. Have you ever stolen anything in your life? Yeah. You have. What do you call someone who steals things? Well, so what are you? I'm human. Right? A human thief. Very good. So have you ever looked at a person with lust? Jesus said whoever looks at another person commits adultery in their heart. Have you ever done that? Okay, so by your admission so far, you're a lying, thieving, adulterer at heart. And you have to face God on judgment day. See, these laws are written on your heart. If there's one thing that we know, and we don't have to be concerned about, is we know we have an ally in the heart of every human being when we share, the, when we share this law. We know, whether they care to admit it or not, we know that their conscience bears witness with the truth of God's law. And whether you say you don't agree with it or not, makes no difference because we know that you do. We know that God's law is written upon every heart. We you know it's wrong to lie, to steal, to lust, and these things. So folks, you're, so you're not a good person according to that standard. So what are you going to do if you stand before God and He judges you by that standard? Oh, if God judged you by that standard, would you be found innocent or guilty? If God were to judge you by that standard we just went through, would He find you innocent or guilty of breaking His law? Pardon me? Oh, oh, so you're an idolater too. You've created a God in your imagination that you're more comfortable with. Okay. See, that's what we've been talking about when I first got up here, folks. We were talking about idolatry. Idolatry is one of the most dangerous of all sins because it will allow you any other sin. You create a God in your imagination that you're more comfortable with. It will allow you to lie, to steal, and repent, so you can be saved. It will allow you to lie, to steal, to commit adultery. No, your God will have no problem with the dirty magazine under your bed or whatever it might be. Because you created your own, your, a God in your own image. Because folks, truly idolatry is of self-worship. Man loves to worship himself. It's what was offered in the Garden of Eden. And ever since that time, we've had Adam's blood running through our veins. And we automatically worship ourselves. But folks, that is what sin does. God will set us free from that sin. He can set us free to love what is right. He could change our hearts. He could give us a new heart. One made of flesh rather than one of stone. Folks, Jesus said you must be born again. Born again means regeneration. It means a work of God's Spirit. It's a work where God comes into a person and He removes that stony heart. The one that doesn't think a little bit of lying and stealing is a big deal. He'll remove that heart and He'll put in a heart of flesh. He'll put in a heart that loves the things that are right loves perfect righteousness. If you love perfect righteousness, you'll love the perfect lawgiver. You'll love the God who gave you life. That's the sign, folks. See, the first commandment is one about idolatry. It says, you shall have no other gods before me. Well, what do we do? We make ourselves God instead of Him. And we know that He exists. We know that we'll stand before Him. We know that we're guilty of those commandments, folks. But Jesus Christ made a way for us to be forgiven. Bearing the wrath of God on that cross. Taking the punishment that we deserve. What will you do with this message, folks? 
So the way you receive this forgiveness is through repentance and faith. You turn from your sins and put your faith and your trust in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you can be saved. Even you. He saved me. He can save you. I was just as far as that. He can change your heart. He can do it in an instant. But folks, it takes humility. And man is so proud, so proud. He'll, he'll stand, he's, I can be good, I can be good on my own, I'm, I'm fine, I'm good. Right up until he stands before God, right before God casts him into hell and he says, What was I thinking? You see folks, hell is for eternity. It's for eternity. How long is eternity? It's not a hundred years, it's not a thousand. It's not a hundred thousand, it's not millions. It's not billions, it's not trillions. It's forever and forever and forever because one lie is an infinite crime committed against an infinitely holy and just God and therefore the punishment is infinite. It's eternity in the lake of fire. But God is not willing that you perish. He has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He will actually save you. Someone who doesn't deserve to be saved and He'll give you His grace. He'll give you His mercy. And He'll save you, not because you deserve it, but because He's so good and so kind that He would come into this world and suffer and die in your place. What's that, sir? Cut His head off. Who's that? Oh, yeah, you're right, sir. They would. Yeah. That's why, that's why people, even here in Canada for that matter, when people use God's name in vain, they use God's name in vain. You ever hear people say, Allah, in a swear word? Of course not. You only hear Jesus Christ. You only hear the one true God being used as a cuss word. And that's called blasphemy, folks. When you take God's name in vain, the Bible says God will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. If you've done that once, you've blasphemed the God who created you. People in high places in government, not only saying what people are doing is all right, but giving hearty approval to it. Putting rainbow symbol on on buildings that are designed for government. Having people in government marching in parades where people openly expose themselves to people and children. That's the wrath of God's abandonment on our nation. God has given them over the Bible. So this means He's given us over to what we want. You don't want righteousness. You don't want truth. You don't want God's love? God will give you over. Please consider this message today we've been sharing with you today. The world tells you just trust in your goodness. There are many religions out there that will tell you you can earn your way to heaven. That you can give enough money. That you can do enough good works. But the Bible says all of our righteousness is every good thing we think we've done is as filthy rags in the eyes of God. Is that what you plan on offering God for your sin against Him? You can offer Him filthy rags? It says without faith it is impossible to please Him. How then can we do anything to make ourselves right before Him? Before Him who must punish sin? How can God who is just allow sinful man to enter into His presence? That is the question you must ask yourself. Because no amount of what we call good works will make us right before Him. The payment for sin, it must be paid. Because God is just, He must punish sin. So how can you be made right? Only if the payment is paid. That's the only way we can be made right. But we can't pay, it, pay that payment ourselves. The wages of sin is death. It says the soul that sins, it shall die. That's what we deserve. The just judgment for our sin is an eternity in hell. It's not God being mean. It's God being just. It's what you deserve. It's what I deserve. But the eternal Son of God lowered Himself. He took on flesh and dwelt amongst His own creation. He lived His life perfect in thought, word, and deed. He upheld the law 
that condemns us. He has held the law that we have broken, that we will stand accountable to. And he gave himself over to be beaten and mocked and spat upon and ultimately crucified. Bearing the wrath that we deserve upon himself. That is the love of God.